Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Power Grid, which is one of the most popular modern designer board games out there today. I think as of this moment, it's, I th I'm pretty sure it's in the top 10 of all time on Board Game Geek, maybe number nine, number eight, I mean, it's always in the top 10. Hugely popular game that has spawned tons and tons of expansions or, or in the form of maps. The base game comes with a map of Germany and on the other side of this board is a map of the United States, but there are so many different country maps available for this game. There are so many different promo cards that have been released over the years. And today, I'm gonna to be running through base power grid with one expansion called Power Grid Robots. You can see that over here. Power Grid Robots is a, a really interesting idea. It basically adds artificial intelligence opponents to basically let you fill up the roles because by default Power Grid can handle two to six players, but really it's not a very good two player game at all. This game is definitely better when you have more players with it and if you don't have very many players, you can create, basically you can snap together as puzzle pieces, different robot parts that will give you a very interesting and very unique opponent to throw into the game. And so today, I am gonna be doing a three-player run-through where I am the green player, Jen is the purple player, and good old Robbie the robot over here is the yellow player. So we're gonna demonstrate how that works, although in the process you'll also get to learn just how base power grid works also. And now I should say, I am doing this run-through today as a, at the request of, oh my goodness, how do I say this? Um, one of my Kickstarter backers, uh, his board game, ne board game geek username is um, Krakaturkulayan, I believe. Krakaturkulayan. Uh, hope you enjoy this, and I hope I got your name right. Uh, ironically, I know you in real life, but uh, we'll just go with Krakaturkulayan. This one's for you. Hope you enjoy this run through of Power Grid plus robots. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Now, in this game, players run power companies trying to build power plants all over the map and supply power to uh, to cities to make money to be the winner whoever has the most cash or uh, it's not entirely true it's a bit more complicated than that, but basically at the end of the game, whoever can provide power to the most cities is the winner. And over the course of the game, you know, we, we start out small, but we expand, we start making tons of money, we make bigger and better power plants, we start out making just little crappy ones that burn coal and oil, but by the end of the game we're making really super powerful ones that, you know, are, are uranium power plants and garbage power plants. It's, you know, there's a huge sense of escalation, and I'll try to give you a sense of that as I play through today. Now, like I said, the game set up for two. Everybody starts with 50 bucks, or electro they're called. Let's see, is it 50? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, yep, 50. And I gotta have Jen's over here kind of tucked in because that fan keeps blowing all her money away. It's very hot today in Malta, and for some reason the Maltese really don't seem to be that big on air conditioning. So it's all about the fans, and it's keeping me cool. Hopefully I will not expire from uh, heat exhaustion during this run through. So, first thing that happens every round, and this game takes place over a variable number of rounds. It really, the length of the game depends on how fast we build new power plants and spread out. So it could take longer or shorter, but the first thing you do every round is, let's focus, is you determine player order, then you buy power plants, then you buy raw materials to run those power plants, you know, the coal and oil and all that. Then you build power plants out in the world, and then you do the bureaucracy, which is where you actually provide power, get your money, and set up for the next round. And we keep doing that until somebody has built, I believe it is 17. Once somebody has built 17 power plants, the game is triggered. The And the game actually is played over what are called steps, although I would call them decades. Basically, the first decade lasts until somebody has built seven power plants. Then the second decade starts, um, and that goes until we get to the bottom of this deck. And that's when the third, well, this deck calls it phase. The instruction manual calls it step. Um, and then the third and final step or phase or whatever you want to call it starts. And that's how we know things are coming up to a head. But the game won't end until somebody builds 17 plants. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Like I said, the first thing that happens is we determine uh, turn order, but we're not going to do that right now because in the first, well actually we do, we're turning, uh, in the first round of the game you determine turn order based randomly. And so I have randomly decided I am the first player, Jen is the second player, and Robbie the robot is the third player. Although it could have been completely random, Robbie could have been first, that's just the way it went. Now, um, so, so that's done. 
That's not how you normally determine player order, but it's how you do it on the first round. Next, we're gonna buy power plants, and this is the meat of the game. Power Grid is a very famously an auction game at its heart. And at the beginning of the game, this is what's on the auction block. These three, this oil burning uh, power plant with a value of three, coal burning plant with a power uh, value of four, this hybrid that can burn oil or coal with a value of five, and this garbage uh, plant that can burn you know, garbage, these uh, yellow things, which has a value of six. Now there's other ones, but these are in the future market. We cannot build this seven, eight, nine, or 10 until some of these get built. Or, well actually I shouldn't say build. What we're actually doing right now is we are basically bidding to, I guess you could say get the, the permissions, the rights, the blueprints, whatever you want to call it, so that we have the ability to build these types of power plants. And now since I'm the first player, I'm gonna start the first bidding. And I gotta start bidding on one of these. And the minimum bid has to be three, four, five, or six. So as you can tell, you know, they're obviously, uh, the, the higher minimum bid, the better it is. I think I'm gonna not start off the highest one, the garbage, because right now garbage is expensive. Garbage costs seven bucks to buy garbage to run this power plant. Actually, I think I'm gonna go for the one next one down. I'm gonna bid five, I'm gonna start my bidding at five and um, go for this hybrid that can burn coal or oil. And so that'll give me a little bit of flexibility because you know who knows what's gonna happen over the course of the game. So I'll open my bidding with five. Well, I could start with anything, but it has to be at least five. Now, Jen, she's next. She's not gonna let me have that for five. That's way too nice. She'll go up to six. And now it's Robbie's turn. And now the, these robots are really, really cool. As you can see, there are a bunch of puzzle pieces, a head, a chest, uh, a sternum, a uh, groin, I guess, and feet. And what you do is there's six of each of those body parts and you randomly stitch a robot together and that creates a whole bunch of robot directives they've got. The head tells you the first city they're ever gonna build. The chest tells you how they behave during the auctions. The, the, the torso, the sternum, whatever, the gut, the belly tells you what they're gonna do when they're buying resources in phase three. The groin area, that tells you what they're gonna be doing in phase four when they actually build power plants out into the world. And then the feet gives every robot, you know, depending on what foot they got, a unique special ability that breaks the game in really big ways. These are hugely powerful special abilities. And these robots need these special abilities that players will never get because, you know, depending on what their other AI tells them to do, they might be really stupid players. They make interesting decisions, but often very stupid or suicidal decisions. But it's always made up for by the fact that they've got this great superpower that'll pull them out and still make them a competitive player, even though they're very, very simple and easy to run. So, um, so we now, let's see, I've started bidding at five, Jen went to six, now we gotta look at phase two, and this, is, this robot is never gonna change. This is his behavior for the rest of the game. So he's very predictable too. If we look at phase two, auction power plants phase, he will, now what he wants to do is, he always wants to get the, the whichever plant is available that uses the cheapest resources, which at the beginning of the game is coal. Coal only costs one buck, oil costs three bucks, garbage costs seven, and plutonium hasn't even entered the game yet, or uranium or whatever. So he definitely wants a coal plant if he can get it. But right now he's not starting a bid, he is raising a bid. And that tells us what here, his maximum bid is always gonna be the minimum bid plus five. And now I forget, I don't think, does he just go straight to his maximum? I, I mean, Jen and I, we always play, they just go straight to the maximum. So he can see that this is a five, and so plus five means he just goes straight to 10. But I don't remember if he's supposed to go forward one at a time. It almost, it actually, it seems kind of pointless because we know he's gonna keep going until he hits 10. So he'll just go boom, straight ahead. He, you know, the bid is six, he could go to seven, but uh -uh, he's just gonna go straight to 10, the minimum bid plus five. So now the, it's at five, it's at um, 10 and he's out. He makes his bid and that's it. And so what is going to happen now? Well, I still want it. So I'll go on ahead and go to 11. And now the bid's back to Jen. And she, she said, you know what, you can have it at 11. So I will pay 11 bucks to get that. So I paid twice what it's worth, um, but that's not all that uncommon. Two, three, four. So here's my change. I paid 20 bucks, got nine bucks in change, and hopefully my money doesn't blow away too. I can feel it wanting to get away. And so I have got myself a hybrid power plant, which I could either burn two coal or two oil or one coal and one oil, my choice, to generate enough power for one city on the board. Okay.
And now, every time a power plant gets taken, a new one gets drawn. And now this 13 is always going to be the first one you draw. Just like it's always uh, 3 through 10 that are always out, 13 is always the next one that comes out. So uh, we slide down and now number 7 is available for bidding if somebody wants it. And number 13 is in the future market. Okay, and I'm done. I cannot bid on anything anymore because players can only get one power plant. So now we're going to start the bidding again. Jen is the second player, so she gets to choose one. And you know what? So now there's just one where you could actually power two cities. All these other ones that are available could only power one city. But Jen could power two cities. And it's nice. When you power two cities, you make 33 bucks during the bureaucracy phase. If you power only one city, you only make 22 bucks. So it would be kind of nice for Jen to get this, although she knows that the dummy player is automatically going to raise the price from 7 to, uh, what, 12. Because he's always going to go minimum bid plus 5. I think instead... Hmm. Actually, I think Jen wants to go for the cheapest one. She wants to get this oil power plant because, well, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's very inefficient. Oil, which already costs three bucks, you have to burn two oil to generate one power plant. You can see this number nine up here with only one oil you can, you can generate a city. Um, so there, it's definitely better to get these other ones, but you know, it's two oil for one. If she gets this one instead, one and a half oil generates one. So this is a better return over the course of the game. But here's the problem. The main strategic element, or I guess tactical element of this game, is trying to control turn order. Because whoever is in last place in the game gets first dibs buying resources from the market and gets first dibs buying cities out here on the map. And that's hugely beneficial. So for the first part, a big portion of the game, there's always kind of this reverse race where everybody's kind of playing this game of chicken. Nobody wants to get ahead of anybody else. Everybody wants to be in last place so that they can get first dibs and the best prices on the market and stuff like that. So Jen knows I've got a five. If she were to take this six or seven, I would have a lower number than her, and that means I would get first dibs. I would get dibs before her. She doesn't want to do that. So that means she wants to take her three or the four. And since um, she knows that Robbie has a tendency to want to go for the cheapest thing, and that's usually coal, I don't think she wants this coal plant, because that means she'd have to compete with Robbie for resources. So I think Jen is going to do this. And now, oh, oh wait, no, no, no. Because she knows if she bids to three for this, then Robbie will immediately bid um, three plus five, will immediately bid eight, and then Jen has to get it for nine. Jen's not going to do that. Jen is going to open bidding on one she doesn't want. She's going to open bidding on their... Um, yeah, yeah, on this one. on um, And so, she'll open bidding at four, and now Robbie says, oh, 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 I want it, four plus five, nine, nine, nine. I can't bid because I'm already out, so Robbie immediately takes it to nine, and Jen says, you know what, Robbie, it's yours. And Robbie says, oh boy, oh boy, I'm so happy. And he's got his power plant, and it cost him nine bucks, even though its base value is four, and he gets four, uh, let's see, or no, no, he uh, paid nine bucks, and I just gave it 10, so he gets one dollar change, there we go. And so he's got his power plant. Okay. And now a new one comes out. And now we don't know what this is. This could be um, any of the other ones. And it's a number 34. It's a, uh, or a nuclear power plant, which burns uranium or plutonium. I forget which. So anyway, everything gets cheaper again. This guy has now entered the market. 12 th and 34 is in. Okay. And now, it's um, since Jen did not get what she wanted, she gets to start bidding again. Very standard auction stuff. And now, both Robbie and I are out. So she can have whatever she wants at base value. And I think, you've guessed it, she'll take this one and it only costs her three bucks because nobody is left to bid her up. So she gets seven change and she's very happy with that. Okay, so, and then again, another one comes out and it's a number 28. So these all come down. This um, much better oil one comes in and this 28 goes ahead of this number 34. Okay, this is all coming in the future and this is what we can bid on right now. But we are now done. Everybody has gotten a power plant. In the very first round of the game, everybody is required to get a power plant. In subsequent rounds, you're never required to get a power plant if you don't want, or power, plans for a power plant, but in the first one you had to. So we've all done this and now we go on to phase number three, buying raw material. And the worst player begins, which is a very weird German translation to say whoever is in last place begins. But oh wait, no. Now this is a special thing that only happens in the first round. 
after everybody's bought their power plant, and it doesn't say it on here, it really should, only in the first round after everybody's bought their power plant, we reevaluate turn order. And so, um, Robbie's got a four. That makes him um, the, uh, right, right, wait. No, I've got a five. I've got the best power plant, because it's implicitly better, because it's a five. That means arguably I am the first player because I'm in the lead because I've got the best plan. So I stay first player. Robbie's got a number four and Jen's got a number three. So that means Jen and Robbie have swapped places. Jen is in last place because she has the worst power plant. And that's happy for her because now we start uh, phase two and that means now Jen is the worst player because she has the worst power plant, and so she gets to buy first while stuff is at its cheapest. And so, now, um, she, the only thing she can use here is oil. She cannot use coal. Um, so, she's going to start buying oil. Well, I wonder if she should have... Yeah, what the heck, she's going to go with it. All right. I mean, I'm thinking maybe she should have grabbed that coal plant instead of the oil plant, but what the heck. So she's going to buy oil, and oil at this point costs three bucks. So Jen is going to pay three bucks, six bucks to buy two of these, so that's six bucks spent, although she might spend more. Um, you, I mean, you buy it all at once, just in one fell swoop. Let's see here. So that costs, and... Now, a given power plant can store twice as much um, as, it can, as it can burn. So this can burn two, which means it can store four. I think that means Jen will buy one more while it still only costs three bucks. So that costs her another three bucks. At uh, 10, she gets... Uh, what was it? Three. So she gets seven bucks change. All right. So she basically, but now if she, she could buy another one, she could hold up to four, but the price has gone up to four bucks now. So I don't think Jen's going to buy any more. She's going to stop when it's at its cheapest three and not pay extra. So there she goes. And now she's done. Now, she cannot buy anything else because she can't store it. She can only store oil, here, or store oil here. Now, next up is Robbie. And so, if we look at his belly, it says, if he, it says, if he is in last place, which he's not. Currently, Jen's in last place. If he was in last place, he would go on a spending spree and buy as much as he possibly could. He spend all his money if he can. But otherwise, he's not. He's in middle place right now. Instead, he's just going to buy enough for normal production, which means normal production would be two coal. So Robbie is only going to buy two coal. That costs him two bucks. One. Oh, he's got to break another ten. Ten. And so he gets another nine change. Two, three, four. By the way, um, it's all one-sided money. Money is supposed to be secret throughout the game. So you, everybody keeps their money hidden or face down or whatever. Okay. So, uh, Robbie, um, you know, he, did, he could buy more. He certainly got plenty more. He could store four, but his logic says, you know what? I only buy what I need unless I'm in last place. And then I start going over. Different um, bellies. They might have different rules. He might have rules that say only on odd turns does he go crazy. It might have rules that say I will always buy the cheapest stuff I can, you know, but this is the, this is the Robbie we got this game. So now he's done buying and now me, um, I'm the first player, but that means I get to go last. Now I get to buy and I can also, now I can burn coal or oil. So I want to buy some stuff too. Coal is still pretty cheap right now. So I'm going to buy as much coal as I can. I'm going to buy four. And the first one cost me one, and these other ones cost me three. So that's two, four, six, seven bucks. So I'm going to pay seven bucks to buy as much coal as I can store. All right. And if I could buy more, it would have gone up to three bucks now. But anyway, so that was pretty nice. Okay. We are now done with the buying materials phase, and we move on to the building phase. And again, as before... The worst player begins, and Jen is still in last place. It won't be reevaluated until next round, so Jen gets to go first. And so, now Jen could build a power plant in as many cities as she can afford. But here's the thing. The turn order, what we've been doing to determine turn order by looking at the values of our, our power plants, that's the tiebreaker. The real determiner of turn order is how many power plants have you built in the world. If Jen builds, you know, Jen's got more money than us. If she builds like in three cities, she'll, chances are she'll become the first player because she has more power plants than anybody else. Jen wants to stay in last place. So I think Jen is only going to build one power plant. Now at the beginning of the game, power plants cost 10 bucks a pop. So Jen's going to pay 10 bucks and she is going to build a power plant. And she could pay 20 and build it up, but she's not going to. Now, she, now, it's it's the same in every city. You can see these all... Well, actually, the first power plant built here in Munich costs 10. The second one costs 15. The third one costs 20. But you cannot build a second or a third one until you get to the second or the third step 
of the game. Um, or phase, depending on what translation you use. So, um, you know, for the beginning of the game, pretty much only one person can be, only one player can be in each city. So it costs her one, and what she wants to do is she wants to build in a place that makes it cheap for her to expand. So like if she chose Munich here, she'd build that cost her the 10 bucks. And then in the future, if she wanted to build in Augsburg next door, it would cost her another 10 plus six for the connections. So this would cost 16, it would cost 20 to get to Regenberg, and it would cost um, 24 to get to Passau. So that's not bad, but I have to admit, I'm not that familiar with the German map. I've played the American map more. Let's see if there's another one. Oh, I should say one other thing. At the beginning of the game, well, you'll notice there are six colors. I don't, I don't remember if I've mentioned this already as part of setup. There are six colors. If we were playing a six-player game, all six regions would be active. But in a three-player game, only three regions are active, and we had to agree what they were. And so we agreed before the game started, this red and this teal and this brown region, they were out of the game because they're just very far away from me, and I just don't want to have to reach that far. So it's this blue, purple, and yellow region. So Jen could build in any city in these three regions. And that's a real shame. If Essen were in the game, she'd totally want to build here. Because look, Essen has super cheap connections of two, four, and six. It's super cheap and free from Essen to um, uh, Duisburg, super cheap. It's free to build from one to the other. But we can't build in Essen because it's in the Rose area. So we got to build in these ones. These are normally the places, you know, everybody starts up north and kind of spreads their way south, I guess. Yeah, because look over here in, uh, in Kiel, it's like only four and four and eight. So it's much cheaper up north, but we're down south. And looking around, but the best one I can see is probably over here. So this is pretty nice. In Halle, it's um, a free connection to Leipzig, and it's only six to go from Halle to Erfurt. You can't go north to um, uh, Mag uh, Mag Magdeburg or Berlin, but it's cheap to go out. So I think Jen's going to go on ahead and build in here. It's a little bit dangerous to do that because she's kind of building herself into a corner, but she's going to go there with the notion that she'll expand freely, only paying the 10 bucks to expand to Leipzig, and with only six buck into Erfurt. All right, and now, so she paid her 10 bucks. And she didn't have to pay a connection cost. It was the first one she built. And now, you know, she could build more. She's got more money. She could just pay 10 bucks and no connection and build into Leipzig right now, or Leipzig right now. But if she does that, because what's happened is, Jen has gone from having no power plants to one power plant. Which means if we reevaluate right now, she would be in first place. And she doesn't want to be. She wants to be in last place because she wants cheap, cheap stuff. So she's only going to build one. All right, now, next up, it is Robbie's turn. Now, let's see, what does Robbie like to do? Robbie has the all cities. That means Robbie is a monster when it comes to building. He wants to build as much as he can. It's interesting, because we have those legs, Robbie is going to push to make this game shorter than normal, because he's always going to build as fast as he can. And the game is determined once... Probably Robbie, more than anybody else, built his 17th. So we're going to have kind of a quicker game here because of Robbie. Because he wants to spend as much as he can to build as much as he can. Now, the first place he's going to build, he has to choose. And that's where his head comes in. Remember, there's six different heads. And these heads, the, the head could say it's random. And then there's like kind of this system you use to choose randomly. Or the head could say that um, players engage in a bidding war for to choose where Robbie's going to go. But Robbie has a last choice head. And what that means is... Whoever's in last place, and that's Jen, gets to choose where Robbie is going to go. So what is Jen going to choose? I think Jen, well, if I were on the board, Jen would probably try to put Robbie right next to me to kind of um, you know, squeeze me um, and, and try to gobble up all the connections before I could do them. But since I'm not on the board yet, I think Jen will go on ahead and have Robbie come down here in Munich, which looks at first glance, and I could be wrong about this, but it looks like it's the cheapest. Because you got a 6, 10, 14. You know, over here in Stuttgart, you got a 6, 12, 17, 15. So you got a 6 there. Mannheim has a 6, 10, 11. So that's one's pretty good too. Actually, yeah, maybe he'll go for Mannheim. But here's the problem. Mannheim gets him a little bit closer to Jen. Jen, I mean, he knows, Jen knows how fast he's going to build. Jen wants Robbie as far away from her as possible. So to put him down here, he's got to pay 10 bucks to build his first city. So there goes 10 bucks. And now remember, Robbie has all cities. He wants to keep building until he runs out of cash. So the next city he's gonna be, he, and he goes cheapest as he can. So he's gonna build next in, um, out in Augsburg, which will cost him 10 plus the six connections. So that's gonna cost him 16 to get into Augsburg. So let's go on ahead and pay 16. So that's 10 and one and five. But he's not done yet. Oh, not our Robbie. Now, what's the next cheapest? Looks like um, Munich to uh, Regensburg. 
is uh, 10 plus 10, so that's gonna cost 20. So he's gonna pay, another, although does he have 20? Oh, he might be broke now. He might not be able to build a third. He's got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. He only has 14 bucks left. And the cheapest he can do is 10 plus 10. Yeah, so he cannot build a third. So he'd like to, but he's gonna stop at two. And now that puts Robbie in the lead here at number two. Okay, and so now it is finally my turn to build. Okay, and now where do I want to go? Now, you know, I mean, the simplest thing, I'd probably want to, again, I'd love to go to Essen if I can, but now Jen, your Robbie's taking like the second cheapest place, and we don't want to build next to Robbie because he's going to build. I mean, so Mannheim is nice with the, with the 6 and the 10 and the 11, but, um, you know, a Cologne is nice with a 7, well, no, a 7, 20, and a 21. That's pretty rough. Cologne's not good. So Mannheim is nice too. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, but you know what's even nicer? Oh, this is a very aggressive move. Normally I would not play this aggressive, but that, let's go for it. I'm gonna go for Leipzig, right next door to Jen. That cost me 10 bucks, and that means I've got, I'm now tied with Jen, but Jen then has the tiebreaker of having a, a better uh, you know, power plant than me. And, see, because here's the thing, it cost me 10, and so what I've done is I prevented Jen from having this super cheap connection she can build because I took it. And the nice thing is I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to keep building. I'm going to spend another 10 to build another. And plus I'll have to pay, was it six? Yeah, it looks like six. Five, six. I'm going to build a second because now the nice thing is you can skip cities. So um, I can skip over Halley and come over, or Hale, or how you pronounce it, and come over here to Erfurt, which will cost me 10 plus six. And so I paid 16. Now that puts me tied for first place with Robbie. And then the tiebreaker is I am in first place because I've got a better, um, what do you call it? Uh, we call it a power, power, power plant style than him. But, see if I didn't, if I only built one, then Jen would still be behind me because she's got the lower number. So there's no reason for me to build one. I might as well build two and thereby block Jen from being able to get this cheap one as well. Now, if Jen wants to build, because I've surrounded her, she's got to leapfrog over me to get over here to Dresden or to get um, from Halle over here to Nuremberg or Fulda or, well, no, that's it. Yeah, because we're both kind of in the corner over here. So that's really interesting. I kind of wedged her in. Like I said, it was dangerous for her to go in there. She probably, if, you know, she could go back in time she would have grabbed an extra spot, but she didn't because, and you know, at least she'll have the benefit from being able to go first. So, now that was it. I could keep building, although, no, actually, no, I can't because it looks like I'm, only, I'm down to nine bucks. And um, meanwhile, wait a minute, Robbie has more money. Robbie has tons more money. Okay, uh, I, I must have misunderstood. Robbie can actually afford more. I don't know why I thought he couldn't. Let's see, Robbie's definitely going to build a third one, like I said before, in Regsburg because that costs him 20 I must have gotten the colors mixed up. So that cost him 20. Ah, uh, see, now he's broke. Okay. And so he's got a third. So actually, Robbie is in first place. I'm in second. And Jen is in third. Okay. So we're done with that. None of us are going to build anymore. And so finally, the last thing we do in a round is focus. We move on to bureaucracy where we get our money. And then in phases or steps or whatever you want to call them, one and two, remove the highest power plant from the game. And restock the market. Okay. So uh, we get our money. And our money is based on providing power to our connected cities. Let's go with Jen first. Now, she um, can only power one city. It costs her two oil. She'll go on ahead and do that. She'll take two of the three oil she's got. And these go over here. They, you know, they, they get burned. She burned that oil. She can power one city. And if you look on the back of your nice little player turn order thing, it shows you one si burn, powering one city gets Jen 22 bucks. So Jen is still crazy in the lead here. She's got more money than anybody. But she is kind of squeezed in there. I see. Now me, I'm going to power. I've got two cities, but unfortunately, I can only generate power for one of them. Even though I've got enough, you cannot run a given power plant twice. I would have to have more power plants to be able to power both cities. So I'm just going to burn two coal to activate this power plant once. I'm sorry, to activate one of these. And that will get me 22 bucks as well. One, two. All right, there we go. And now Robbie, he's got three cities, but he can also only power one. So he'll go on ahead and take the uh, two, burn those, and he will also get 22 bucks. One, two, one, two. Oh shoot, I totally forgot something about Robbie. Gosh darn it, I forgot. His special power, always build your first city for free. Robbie has paid 30 bucks, 
but he should have he should have 10 more bucks back because when he built in Munich that was free so he's got 10 more bucks and wait a minute did that mean he had enough to build a fourth city let's take a look at this so he had 10 more bucks and Oh my gosh. No, no, no. He would have needed 22 bucks to build from Regensburg to Passau. So he could not have built again. But Robbie has 10 more bucks than we thought we did because of his special ability, which I forgot about. Sorry, Robbo. All right. So, so everybody's made their money. Now we gonna continue um, and in, the, in the first and second phase, the most valuable power plant that's out here, this um, uranium one or plutonium or whatever, a nuclear one for 34, we put it face down on the bottom of the deck. And what that means is when we get to near the end of the game, phase three, it's going to be the first power plant we see. Phase three is going to be full of really, really high value level power plants that keep getting seeded. And then a new one comes out and it is number 33. So it, um, oh, it's a nice green one that generates power for four. Oh, that's really nice. But a starting bit of 33. And we can't even get to it yet because it's not in the market. Yeah, but anyway, so that goes, happens. Oh, we restock the market, uh, all the markets. And it, on the last page of the manual, there's a nice little, so we're playing a three player game. And so we're in step one. So uh, four coal, two oil, one garbage, and one plutonium or uranium. I forget what. So four coal comes out. One, two, three, four, which brings the, the price of coal back down. What was it? Two oil, which brings the oil back down. So now Jen can get it at three instead of four again. And one more garbage. So garbage just dropped from seven to six. And the first bit of uranium at 16 bucks. Very expensive. Right, okay, and we are now done. So the second round begins, and the first thing you always do at a round is redetermine player order. And now that Robbie is in first place, he becomes the first player, I'm the second player, and Jen is still the last player, which means she gets first dibs on stuff. Although it's interesting, right now, see Jen's not competing with anybody. So be, getting first dibs, Jen might want to get herself a coal plant this turn because she gets first dibs on coal while it's still cheaper. I think that means Jen is gonna eyeball this number eight. But here's the interesting thing. Robbie, who's gonna open the bidding, his criteria is get a power plant that uses the cheapest resources possible, and that's coal. So that means Robbie is gonna skip this and this. This is what he's gonna to want too. So we're gonna to have to wait and see. Um, oh, gosh darn it, wow, that just messed all kinds of stuff up. But how fortunate. The wind has finally knocked over the box. It tried to stay up as long as it could. If you guys would like, I'm gonna to have to tape this box down for the extended playthrough as we find out what Robbie's gonna do, what Jen is gonna do, etc., etc. And I'll play through. You know, if I can, I'll see if I can make it all the way through the first step. But we'll see how that goes. You can so you can hit the button on screen or follow the show notes or hit the other button and go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.